Well, hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, so I'm in the middle of reworking my system. Um, brought it inside so that it's really close to the panel. You can see there, inverters right here. I did have everything out in the garage, but now I have everything inside in the laundry room right next to the breaker panel. I'm getting ready to hook all this stuff up. But <laughs> while I was here, I um, I keep getting asked about my fans. Um, I did a brief kind of uh start up of these fans that i installed and didn't really describe them um that much but uh these fans uh, they're super fast and the reason that i got the fans uh, the high speed fans is because when this thing was out in the garage and in the summer um the the garage got really hot in the summer it just did and so i was having a problem with heat um uh, and the the fans that I had in there, they were working, but it was still warmer than I wanted. Taking a reading of the transformer, it was near 40C when I was running my air conditioning and things like that. So um, what I did was I installed faster high CFM fans. I got these off of Amazon. Um, I think I paid about $25 a piece times three. Um, if I find the link, I'll, I'll, I'll put the link in the description. Um, but these fans are high speed 24 volt fans and obviously my system goes all the way up to you know as high as 20 uh, 28 29 volts while it's charging so these fans are going to have a shorter life when they're on if the uh, the voltage gets too high but I don't run these fans unless I have a, a, a pretty significant load obviously the fans aren't on right now because I don't have any load on the inverter, it's just on in standby right now. Um, but uh, that's my washer you can hear behind me, I'm running a load of laundry. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to, it, it's it's not a joke, um, It it's three fans, 200 CFM each, so I've got 600 CFM coming out, and how I did it is there's three fans on the back, left middle and right and how I did it was because 600 CFM coming out of these little ports on here and then this little port right here there's not all that much airflow there really isn't now of course some air can come out of these ports and stuff like that but when I had them all going in the same direction which was pulling air into the inverter and then pushing the hot air out um, what I was noticing is the fans were actually struggling to push all of that air out. So what I ended up doing was I took two fans. I got these two fans here that draw air in. And then I have this fan here on the right that draws air out. So what it's doing is it's kind of creating a, um, I guess you could call it like a vortex. It's not really a vortex, but... It kind of creates this, um, this circular motion that kind of pulls the air out like that. So it draws it in through here, pulls it in through here. And uh, it worked really well, and it actually improved the cooling uh, quite a bit. Looking at the transformer temperature, it didn't get above 40. In fact, it was down usually right around 30 to 32 C, even under heavy load. So... Um, I found that that was actually the best way for me, you know, you might disagree or whatever, but based on my testing, that seemed to work out best for me. It, it, again, it's taking the air from this side of the inverter and it's pushing it all the way through the other side of the inverter and then out. And some of it still comes out of these ports. So it's not as if all the air is going out that one fan and then you got two fans versus one. So some of the air is still coming out here, but I will go ahead and turn these on right now so that you can actually hear them uh, kind of up close.
yes, they are very loud. In fact, they are so loud that if there is ever an inverter problem, I would not hear about it. <laughs> um, it's also one of those things that I definitely have to get uh, some sizable fuses on the um, the cables that are running from the uh, the battery to the inverter. Um, the reason being is because these fans are directly connected to the inverter. The inverter itself has its own set of fuses, but the fans are still direct to the battery bank. So if there was ever a problem with the fans short out or something like that, the energy would still go. So having a, uh, a fuse uh, running to both the positive uh, cables that I have back here, these, um, these four-out cables back here, would um, break the connection if there was ever a problem. And it's recommended anyway that you do that. It's something I haven't gotten around to. Just kind of building the system up. Um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, 200 CFM a piece. And again, the way that I have it set up is I've got two drawing air in. One drawing air out. Um, three fans running that much air. It was way too much for these little ports to be able to uh, push the air out, basically. Uh, there was more... Uh, more intake uh, space than there was uh, outtake space, I guess you want to call it. Um, so yeah, again about 25 bucks a piece is what I paid for them. Uh, I am going to install fan filters. That will slow the fans down a little bit, but um, you know, for me, typically I don't have an issue with dust all that much. Um, and it's just kind of one of those things that uh, I usually pull the lid off the inverter about uh, you know once every two months or so. And I've got a small vacuum, and I just vacuum everything out, clean it up. And because I just brought all this inside, I ended up doing a deep clean of the inverter. It was a little dusty, but not too bad. So I did a deep clean of the inverter, that is, with it not powered, with it not connected. Um, and went through and kind of dusted everything out. Um, I used, um, like, um, these little dust uh, clean things or whatever. Actually, they come in handy. I use them for my camera as well. So they're they're pretty nice at getting into the the, the areas that you can't reach with a with a vacuum, um, but yeah, I'm going to be installing dust filters on all three of those, and then dust mat because just because you know I've got air coming in the back, dust filters are only good for pulling air out the back, but there's still going to be air coming in and out of these ports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some the the dust screens, and I'm going to put the dust screens over the top of these here to help alleviate that as well as prevent bugs or anything else that might uh, get in there from getting in there. Um, a while back on my other channel, if you noticed, um, I actually had a very large spider that was sitting right on top of the transformer, right in the middle, and I had pulled the transformer, um, the, the transformer lid off the top of the transformer, the top plate, I pulled that off. And it was sitting right on top. It was a pretty good sized spider. I have pictures on my GP vlog uh, Facebook. It was pretty interesting. It had crawled in there sometime overnight. And it just so happened that I pulled the lid off because I was um, looking at something. And there it was sitting right on top. It's unlikely that something like that would cause some kind of a short. But if one of those happened to liquefy based on all the voltage coming out and say the MOSFETs or something else yes it could in fact short out a component on the inside and I actually have seen dead bugs on the inside of inverters that I repair so it is within the realm of possibilities and I'd like to be able to lower that chance if possible for me personally I do not use the input the the battery input here because I have my own charging system so I'm basically going to remove this and then I'm going to cover that up so that it can't, uh, nothing can get in there. The only problem would be this space in between here. I'll figure that out later. Anyway, this has been a long video. So, uh, go ahead and sign off here. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and be on the lookout for some cool stuff coming up pretty soon. New products from PowerJack I'm pretty excited about, as well as the battery testing. So, there you have it. Uh, Take care.